In this video, we will be disassembling the Honda GXV 530 overhead cam twin cylinder engine. Taking a look at our engine, we want to locate both of the head covers. Directly above the head cover, we want to remove the spark plug boot. And using a 13 16 socket, we can remove the spark plug. And we'll follow the same procedure for the other side. Taking a look at the top of the engine, we want to locate the two thumb screws for our air filter cover. And that air filter cover can then be removed. Followed by our air filter with the protective screen. Taking a look on top of the engine, we have our flywheel screen. This is held on by four Phillips head screws. Taking a look at our fan cover, we have two 10 millimeter nuts and four 10 millimeter bolts holding that on. Additionally, we have two washers and we have our fuel line that we need to remove from the clip. If we locate our two cylinder assemblies and we look between them, we can see our carburetor assembly. Easily accessible from the outside, we have our air cleaner elbow. This is held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. Now removal of these four bolts will cause a handful of components to come loose. So we need to gently set those down and we will focus on each of these one at a time. Beginning with our air cleaner elbow, we want to gently work that airline off. And you want to make sure that you do not lose the metal spacers. We had our carburetor insulator come off as well. We have one piece of linkage that is connected to our control assembly. This can be worked off. On our carburetor, we have a piece of vinyl hose which can remain attached. We also have a solenoid with a wiring harness. We will need to disconnect this. We have a piece of linkage connected to our carburetor and we also have a fuel line connected to our carburetor. We want to push on the linkage retainer to slide that linkage out. The fuel line connecting the carburetor to our filter will be disconnected at the filter side. First removing our retaining clip and then twisting off our fuel line very gently. Located behind where the carburetor was positioned, we have our engine stop diode. This is held on with one 10 millimeter bolt. And following our first wire, we can disconnect that from the ignition coil. We can then follow our other wire to the other ignition coil. And we can continue to follow those wires around to another wiring harness. And we can then remove that unit. Next, we will identify the intake manifold. This is held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. and we can work that piece off. Taking a look at the top 
portion of the engine again, we will locate our two ignition coils. These are held on by one 10 millimeter bolt and one 10 millimeter stud bolt. And it is worth noting that the stud bolt is on the left side on each of these. And don't forget to keep track of the spacers that come off with that coil. Turning the engine around, we can then find our voltage regulator rectifier. This is held on by two 10 millimeter bolts. The bracket and the rectifier will come off as one unit. And we are held on by a connection point on the starter as well as two connection points on our harness. Turning the engine around again, we can see our fuel pump and bracket held on by two 10 millimeter bolts. We then want to very gently twist and pull on the fuel line. And near that fuel pump location, we have one 10 millimeter bolt for our dipstick tube. And directly below the location that we removed our dipstick, we have a oil sender. This uses a 15 16 socket. Shifting focus back to the top of the engine, we have our flywheel and flywheel nut. This uses a 3 4 inch socket and a strap wrench. To remove the flywheel, we are first going to thread on the flywheel nut halfway. Using a three jaw puller, we can set that up on the edge of the flywheel and our flywheel nut. Then applying a little bit of pressure with a socket, we can pop that flywheel off. After that, we can remove our flywheel nut and wiggle off our flywheel. And with that flywheel removed, we can remove our flywheel key. Rotating the engine again, we can locate the starter. And our starter is held on with two 14 millimeter bolts. As you loosen these, you will want to hold on to the starter so it does not fall. Rotating our engine again, we want to locate both of our valve covers. Each of these valve covers are held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. Now, typically you would have to very carefully pry off this valve cover as there is sealant holding it in place. And the second one as well. Next, we're going to set the engine upright and rotating the crankshaft manually, we will look for our alignment marks that are used in timing of the engine. When these marks are aligned with the mating surface on the valve cover, our piston is at top dead center and we have no spring pressure on our rocker arms. And those rocker arms should have just a little bit of play. And we can remove our rocker arm shafts and rocker arms. Rotating our engine again, 
we can locate our cam pulley shaft. Our cam pulley shaft can be removed and we can work that belt around the cam pulley. And that process can be completed with the other side. Taking a look at the perimeter of our cylinder assembly, we have four 12 millimeter bolts and one 10 millimeter bolt. These all can be removed next. And on one of those cylinder assemblies, we do have just a little bit of linkage that needs to be disassembled. And using a large standard head screwdriver, we can work that cylinder assembly free. And I can remove that airline to get that out of the way. And this procedure is repeated for the other side, first removing all of our nuts, as well as that 10 millimeter bolt. Taking a look at our oil pan assembly, we have seven 12 millimeter bolts. I will be loosening these in a star shaped pattern to evenly reduce pressure off of this oil pan. We can then remove our belts and our thrust washer. And I'm going to rotate the crankshaft until I can get access to my connecting rod end cap bolts. These are 10 millimeter bolts and we are only going to remove one end cap at a time because we do not want to mix up the end caps with the wrong connecting rod. We'll wiggle that loose and finish removing that piston and making sure that my match marks line up. I'm going to reassemble that connecting rod and connecting rod end cap just by hand outside of the engine so that again, I do not mix up the end cap with the connecting rod on the other side. and we can reassemble that together as well. And after that comes the crankshaft. Additional parts we could take off include the oil filter, the valve breather assembly, and our coil assembly. We can then remove our valve retainers and springs. You will see that we do have a seal on one side and those valves can then come out. And that concludes the disassembly process.